Hi, I'm Jeff McKay, Chairman of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. I want to wish everyone in our community a Happy New Year. As we enter 2022, I would like to take some time to reflect on the past few years and what we have accomplished with our partners and the community. The pain the pandemic has caused our community is substantial. As of December 2nd, 2021, 1,227 people have sadly died in the Fairfax County Health District due to COVID-19. These were our friends, our coworkers, our family, or our neighbors. Everyone has been impacted in some way by this unprecedented crisis. It has taken a toll on our residents' mental health and economic stability. While we have made a lot of progress, I understand there is still work to do and we will have to continue to have the resources available to help support those in need and keep our community moving forward towards a better future. Our priorities in Fairfax County remain the same. To have one of the best education systems in the country, to build affordable housing in every corner of the county, to protect our environment by reducing our waste and carbon emissions, to provide increased access to public transit, and to reform public safety practices while remaining one of the safest jurisdictions of our size in the nation. I'm proud to say we've made considerable progress in each of these categories over the past year. When COVID-19 tested our nation's school systems and forced us to adapt to a new way of learning, our Board of Supervisors secured funding for teacher raises in order to retain the best and brightest educators for our Fairfax County Public School students. When we saw that the safest place to be during the pandemic was in the security of our own homes, we stepped up our efforts to preserve and make accessible, affordable housing across all income levels, investing almost $50 million in affordable housing throughout the county. We saw the pandemic as an opportunity to look at how public health impacts all aspects of our lives, including our natural environment. Our residents deserve access to green space, clean air, and a sustainable future. For these reasons, we made great strides in setting goals and strategies for good environmental stewardship that will lead our county to carbon neutrality by 2040. It is no surprise to say the pandemic has increased the stresses each of us feel in our daily lives. This certainly has created an increased need for a holistic and comprehensive response to mental health and public safety matters. We continue to evolve our public safety agencies to best meet the needs of all in our community, whether through the expansion of our Diversion First program, implementing a body-worn camera policy for all of our police officers, and introducing a pilot for a co-responder method that will send a behavioral health expert along with a crisis certified officer to handle 911 calls related to behavioral health crises. Every decision we make towards these priorities, of course, is shaped by our One Fairfax Equity Policy. It has put us far ahead of every jurisdiction in the state while responding to this pandemic because it requires us to consider equity in every aspect of the programs and services we provide. It also ensures that we choose partners that do the same. Together with the help of our nonprofit partners, we have administered over 900,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses, have a vaccination rate of well over 70% in every zip code in the county, and have distributed over $52 million in funding assistance to cover food, rent, and utilities for our residents. Two of those partners that helped us tackle this extraordinary task are Neighborhood Health, which has locations across the county, and Cornerstones in Reston. So one challenge that we've had since the beginning is that the communities who are most impacted by the pandemic are the communities, lower income communities in Fairfax County. Our mission here at Neighborhood Health is to improve 
health and advance health equity by providing access to high quality primary care regardless of their income, regardless of their race, regardless of which zip code they live in, regardless of their profession or whether or not they have health insurance. It's ensuring that all of them have the ability to lead their fullest lives and that they all have the ability to achieve their highest level of health. And health access to healthcare is an important part of health equity, but it's not the only part of health equity. Issues like housing, violence, racism, all of them ultimately impact health. So when it comes to health equity, we need to have a holistic approach. The services we provide are primary medical care, both for adults and children, dental care, behavioral health, pharmacy assistance so that they can get low cost or free medications, um, HIV care, and then signing people up for health insurance. And then during the pandemic, our focus has been on COVID-19 testing, providing care for COVID-19, and really important, ensuring that our community, the low-income communities, get vaccinated against COVID-19. So we've really pushed that hard, um, both in our clinics, but also out in the community. We're working with a lot of partners, nonprofit partners, partners in the faith community, and other partners, including local government, to try to get out there and vaccinate as many people as possible, especially those in low-income communities. Cornerstones has been working now for 50 years in the Dallas Corridor region. We provide support for people of extremely low income. 70% of the people we serve are people of color, um, immigrants, and 60% are female-headed households with children. So it's um, really being there for people who need the most support. Even before the pandemic hit our region, we served 16,000 people in need each year, just in the area of food. Families that couldn't send their um, children to school and addressing those increased needs for food. But during the pandemic in particular, we were there um, as a frontline provider distributing uh, rental and mortgage relief assistance for Fairfax County. We also helped people find jobs. So many people lost income or lost their jobs altogether. And so we uh, did online job fairs, help people access um, and, and line up for new jobs. We were so pleased to join with the county in community-wide efforts to address needs for financial assistance, um, child care, out-of-school time learning for parents and kids who were struggling, and really being out there with food distribution, PPE, but notably, we saw a 600% increase in first-time households that turned to Cornerstones for food or requests for housing assistance. I co-chair the Affordable Housing Advisory Council, which oversees the plan to serve uh, 5,000, uh, build 5,000 new homes for people earning 60% of area median income. We are also a provider of affordable housing, a developer ourselves, and we operate a homeless shelter. We know this recovery for our most vulnerable residents, those with the lowest incomes or who have special needs, is gonna be a long time coming as people get the confidence to go back to work, um, for those that were uh, taken ill, for those whose families really were harmed. This is a long recovery. We look forward to working with Fairfax County to support and sustain families throughout. Fairfax County's response to COVID-19 didn't end with health, food, and rent support for our most vulnerable community members. We knew in order to emerge from this public health crisis successfully, we must recognize that we have to create opportunities to aid our economy's small businesses who were heavily impacted by the pandemic's stay-at-home orders, social distancing, and capacity limits. Over the past year and a half, I'm sure you experienced, like I did, the permanent closure of a favorite store or restaurant in the county. In Fairfax County, 90% of our businesses are considered small businesses, meaning they have 50 employees or less. Many of these businesses, in particular businesses owned by women, minorities, and veterans, weren't adequately served by the Federal Paycheck Protection Program loans. That's why we launched the RISE Grant Program, a program that supports our small businesses, particularly those that have been typically shut out of other funding opportunities. The success of that program led us to unveil two additional grants, 
for businesses most hit by the impacts of COVID-19, like child care facilities, hotels, and others in the hospitality industry. Through these grants, we awarded over $87 million to businesses across Fairfax County. We started Delegates Electables back in 2014 at the Farmer's Market in the Springfield Town Center. Um, the menu consists of southern comfort food, if you will, potato salad, mac and cheese, barbecue chicken, things of that nature. Um, and we decided back then that this was something that Springfield needed. And so we decided to open a brick and mortar in 2017. The neighborhood has been very supportive. Um, They're very appreciative of having us here. Um, they supported us in, through the entire pandemic. And, and we're really instrumental in helping the restaurant be successful. La Blalo Eatery is a fast, casual, Vietnamese restaurant located in Springfield, Virginia. Uh, we offer traditional Vietnamese sandwiches and noodle soups, as well as a variety of uh, snacks that are both sweet and savory. So the beginning of the pandemic was one of the scariest times uh, for me as a business owner since we opened our doors for business. There was a drop in revenue uh, of anywhere from 40 to 50 percent right away. When you are an employer, you are a provider, you know, and so it's not about you anymore. It's about you, your team, your business, and you have to make sure it's your goal to make sure that everyone uh, is taken care of. Well, it had been a rough two years prior to the pandemic, and when that hit, it was, it was like uh, I couldn't believe that we were going through another major challenge, something that we never faced before. So there was a lot of uncertainty. We were really, really concerned about whether or not the business was going to survive or not. Once we received the Fairfax County grant, um, there was a sense of relief. Um, having that extra cash, you know, in the bank helped us with some of our major expenses, payroll, paying the rent, inventory, things of that nature. So it's a, a huge relief for us to have something to fall back on. The grant that we received from Fairfax County came at a very critical time for us. We needed that right away while we were waiting on the rest of the assistance from uh, the government. And as it turns out, the process was very easy and we got the grant money uh, relatively fast, so it was able to help us fill in the gaps right away. The fact that I was able to remain open, keep my staff working, I'm able to pay them, they're able to pay their bills. So it was, it was very important. As we move forward, I'm excited that we have developed an economic recovery framework which not only identifies the county's key needs and challenges, but also makes recommendations for fostering a more equitable, inclusive recovery. It was this work that informed our grant programs and led to the creation of the Fairfax Founders Fund, a fund that provides entrepreneurs access to startup capital. This all said, our work to support the community and our economy couldn't be done without our county employees. Despite the risk and stress, they have showed up to work every day to provide critical programs and services to our residents. In 2019, the Board of Supervisors expanded and passed six weeks of paid family leave for county government employees. While it is always smart to invest in your workforce, with COVID-19 on the horizon, we could not have guessed how important this policy would prove to be. During the pandemic, when employees needed to take time off to care for their health or their families, they now had the security to do so without risk to their income. From October 1, 2020 through November 5, 2021, Fairfax County employees have been able to utilize over 368,000 hours of this benefit for their families. It is my hope that our work on the county level will serve as motivation for businesses and organizations across the Commonwealth to implement similar paid leave policies. County employee Sue Boucher recently shared her story with me about what paid family leave meant to her. My name is Sue Boucher and I'm the manager of the interns and volunteers at the Fairfax County Juvenile and Domestic Relations District Court. I've been with the county for 20 years. Uh, in June, I had to have a triple bypass surgery and was out of work for 
several weeks and was grateful that we had the paid family leave that would cover the hours that I needed to heal. So the paid family leave is an additional six weeks of leave uh, due to a medical emergency that you, so you don't have to use your own leave, um, particularly because a lot of people don't have that type of leave accumulated. So it takes away that stress of knowing that you have time to heal without worrying about how you're going to get paid. I was told about the leave right away from our HR uh, assistant and it was a very simple process to apply for the leave. Um, I actually had only applied for 130 hours at first, not realizing I would need more. And it was very easy to add the extra hours onto it. I don't think all the county employees realize we have this benefit and it certainly is a nice benefit to have when you have an emergency. I'm very thankful for Chairman McKay and the entire Board of Supervisors for passing this leave and making it much easier for all employees to have the time they need, especially during this pandemic when many folks are having challenge, getting COVID and needing time to recover. Um, it's, it's just a tremendous benefit for all county employees. Finally, what makes Fairfax County such a tremendous place to live and work isn't just our programs, employees, or our partners. It's our 1.2 million residents. I am very proud to lead a county with such a caring and diverse population. We are lucky to live in a community that gives so freely of its time and talents. Every day I hear new stories about the generosity and kindness of our community members throughout the pandemic. Those countless hours of time given may never be fully known. Since March of 2020, one group, however, has donated over 60,000 hours through the contributions of 1,400 volunteers. The Fairfax County Medical Reserve Corps is a volunteer group dedicated to public health. Whether it was conducting contact tracing or administering vaccines, this generous group of people strengthened our ability to respond to this public health crisis. So the Medical Reserve Corps program is a national network of volunteers who support the public health functions during times of natural disasters or man-made disasters. There are approximately 800 MRC units nationwide and Fairfax MRC is one of them. We uh, train our volunteers, we uh, allow them to participate in exercises, in um, real world events, and this way they learn the skills, they get the experience and the knowledge to be able to respond to such incidents, but also to support the Fairfax County Health Department day to day Day operations. Fairfax MRC is actually one of the oldest MRC programs in the country. It was created by Dr. Gloria back in 2002 as a six-member physician task force called the Biomedical Assistance Team, or BMAT for short. And then as the national network came to life in 2003, then this BMAT team joined the national network and we were called the Fairfax Medical Reserve Corps. We have currently about 4,000 MRC volunteers, but you don't have to be medical. In fact, you know, our volunteers have one thing in common is their passion for volunteerism and for public health, and of course, the desire to make a difference in their communities. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, more than 3,000 volunteers have signed up to join the Medical Reserve Corps. As 2020 came to an end, Fairfax MRC launched its latest mission to lead the way in COVID-19 vaccinations with over 400 approved vaccinators that have consistently volunteered to vaccinate our community. Non-medical volunteers work at vaccination sites through the Fairfax Health District, including the Fairfax County Government Center, health department clinics and equity clinics, and they work as language interpreters, flow controllers, readers, site assistants, post-vaccination staff, and logistics assistants. Our volunteers, we consider them as the backbone of the Fairfax County Health Department. We are really lucky to call them part of our team, and we are really lucky to know that they choose to serve the county and the communities in Fairfax through the Fairfax Medical Reserve Corps. Thank you for being a part of our community. 
please stay in touch with my office at fairfaxcounty.gov slash chairman, where you can sign up for my newsletter. I wish you a happy and healthy 2022.